Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you how to use Linda Canasi's window box die and turn it into a front porch scene. This is a card idea I've been playing around with for a while. I've got a few different stamps that I thought would be fun for different holidays, you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas even, where I want to kind of put something on a front porch. It's sort of the scene that I've been wanting to build. And today I... I figured it out, so I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I made this. What really made the difference for me is the uh, window box. It's actually called an impresslet, and it's designed by Linda Canasi. And what it is is actually a die and an embossing folder all in one. I'll show you in a second. So I've taken an eight and a half by eleven inch piece of paper and cut it down the middle at four and a quarter. So I've got two strips there. And then this is that impresslet. So you see it's got a die in the center and then it's got an embossing folder around it. So when you run it through your Big Shot, it'll cut and emboss at the same time. And that set also comes with a bunch of tiny little floral pieces, which I went ahead and cut out already. And then I've got a wood grain um, embossing folder that I will use for the stairs. And then to decorate my front door, I wanted to put a bow. I was thinking a wreath would be fun, like, at Christmas, but this is a summery card. I wanted to celebrate summer a little bit longer, so I'm going to put a bow on the front door. And then this is another one of Linda's sets, and I'll have links to everything in my blog, but there are some tiny little dimensional stars in there, so I just went ahead and cut those out. And that dies nice because it cuts out six at a time. It also cuts out six snowflakes. Then I'm going to make my sentiment with this word love. This is a Stampin' Up! die. And I cut it out four times. And I will stack those up to make a nice thick embellishment. For the rest of my sentiment, I've already gone ahead and heat embossed it. Um, white embossing powder on black cardstock. And I cut it out with that narrow uh, strip of ease die from Heffy Doodle. The sentiment as well as the stamp. Uh, all of the images are from the Rabbit Hole Designs. This is the Love You More set. And I went ahead, stamped and embossed my couple. They're going to be behind the doors. And then that little bird is going to be kind of flying off the porch. And that sentiment says, you feel like home to me, which I thought is great for a front porch. Now, I went ahead and took a piece of vellum and I just traced around the die so that I can cut out uh, two little panels that will go behind the doors. And then I've got two 5 8 inch strips that will be my column. Uh, and then I've got a quarter inch strip that'll be the roof of the porch. And then I also freehand cut a little pot for the plants. And that was a 3 quarter inch wide strip that I just sliced up the sides and gave myself a little bit of a diagonal on either end. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take one of our strips, we will score it at five and a half inches, and fold it to make a top folding note card. The second strip, we're going to take and cut one half inch off of the long end. So it will now be ten and a half inches by four and one quarter inches. And then we'll put it in the score pal and score it at five and a half inches, just like you would a regular top folding note card. But notice that one side is now shorter. We're not working with the short side yet, we're going to work with the long side. And I'm going to go ahead and line up the fold that I just uh, put in with the bottom of the stonework on that impresslet. And it's easy for me to tape it in place so that when I start putting it in the big shot it doesn't shift around on me. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but the last time I cut it out I accidentally left one of the white squares in there. <laughs> I don't notice it yet, it'll cause me a problem in a second. When you run it through your Big Shot, your sandwich is normal, except you need to use the uh, original plate that it comes with and open it up to tab one. The magnetic plate won't work because it's too thick. And I just ran it through my Big Shot and then I can open it up here and this is where I'll realize that that, that little white square was still in there from the last time I cut it out. Normally these just pop right out, but I think that uh, caused some extra pressure in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I didn't get a, a clean cut here, but it's no big deal. I'll just use my craft knife and I'll, I'm really applying light pressure. I'm just going in the same groove that's already basically cut out there. But if I push too hard, then I might accidentally change the lines and I don't want to. I just want to follow the lines that are already there. 
So I'll go over them a couple times. And then this is that square that the whole thing was still in my impresslet from the last time. So I'll cut it out all the way around. But isn't that neat how you get the texture and the die cutting all at once? It's pretty cool. I like it. And I'm careful not to just pull and rip because we are so close to a cut edge. And there we go. And I can use this soft brush and just kind of brush away some of those little hairs that come from die cutting. And then here is the trick that I use when I'm going to fold something that's really close to the cut edge. I'll put a straight line along the fold and then I use my bone folder and I'll just use that to gently push upwards and that way when you fold it it won't accidentally fold where you don't want it to sometimes it'll fold just those those little um, brackets coming across um, it would fold there instead of wanting to fold where it should so now i'm going to put this into my score pal again and i'm going to score at one inch two inches and three and a half inches remember we've already cut a half inch off the bottom so at one inch, two inches, and three and a half inches. And then we're gonna zigzag fold it here, and that will give us two stairs. A uh, one inch tall stair and a one and a half inch tall stair. And then I can use the wood grain texture plate, and I'm lining it up at the bottom. I'm not concerned that the top part won't have any embossing there because it'll be hidden. And then I can just fold that up, and you can see we've got stairs that now lead up to the window, but we're going to turn that window into a door. When you add handles, all of a sudden it becomes a door. <laughs> I'll show you shortly. Uh, so the next thing that I wanted to do was add a little bit of color and shading. So I've got a pair of makeup brushes and I've got weathered wood distress oxide ink. If you're going to go with a, a more spooky scene like Halloween, start with darker cardstock and then build up a, a darker shading on top of that. But this is summertime, so I wanted to make it nice and bright and feel sunny. So I'm just gonna go on either side of those wide pieces, and that will make them look a little round. They'll turn into columns. And then for the roof, I'm only going along the bottom edge. I'm not adding shading to the top because the sun would hit from the, the top and your shadow would be underneath, not at the top as well. And then I'm gonna grab that bigger brush and I'm just gonna lightly add some color to the stone. And you'll notice from time to time, I, I pick up all the pieces and I fold it all up and put it together so that I can just sort of see what it looks like and make sure that I have enough shading. It's kind of hard to see this color on white as you're doing it, but if you're not careful, you can go too far. <laughs> so it's always easier to add more than it is to subtract ink on white paper. So uh, just be gentle with it and, and build up in small layers. And I decided I need a little more shading right around the door. Then once I've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and glue my vellum panels in place. This is the back side. And for me, I decided to use tweezers and PVA glue. The PVA glue is in a fine line bottle, so I can really control um, how much glue I'm applying, and those tweezers help me pick up the vellum and put it down in place without having to move it too much. The PVA will give you some wiggle room, so that's great if you kind of don't put it down exactly right, but because this is vellum, if you wiggle it too much, like I'm about to do right here, um, you'll get some adhesive onto the vellum that shows and that's not what we want so i'm just going to take my little stylus and clean it up real quick while it's still wet and that's no big deal and now we've got panels on our doors so now i want to figure out where my couple's going to be behind the window and once i get them lined up where i want them i will take a pencil and then just trace around onto the that top folding note card and before I glue it down, I wanna do some quick coloring. I love Sandy Alnock's hex chart for my Copic colors. It really helps me see what colors go with what and what colors that I have. And as they dry back, sometimes they're a little different than the marker caps. So I find that chart very helpful. And I'm just speeding through this coloring here. I did leave it in just as time-lapse here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just starting with my shadows in the dark areas, the 
where I think the darkest areas would be, and then adding a lighter color, and I only did two tones for all of this. For the hair, I actually did, I think, three colors, and then I also used a gold gel pen on her hair and a copper gel pen on his, and then I kind of smudged it with my fingers just to give them some metallic highlights. For the tiny pieces that are already die cut, it's easy to use the stylus to hold them in place because your finger would cover up most of it. I'm using three shades of red for these flowers just so that I can get some different variation there. And I'm being not particular at all. I put kind of darker color in the middle and that bigger piece with the green hanging off of it, I actually, it's just background color. Most of that will be covered up. So I was very sloppy with it. And then I grabbed a couple of my BG markers to kind of add some shading to the bow. Then I realized I forgot his glasses were glass, so I needed to treat those. I used two uh, cool gray markers and then a white Posca pen. And where I had accidentally gone over my embossed line there, I touched it up with a uh, Copic multi-liner just to brighten up those lines again. And then I can put my little bow together for the front porch. So I'm using a stylus here. You can use a paintbrush or pencil, something to just kind of curl around. And that will help me put my bow together. And when I fold it up, and I can, I can smash this pretty flat at this point because I, I haven't given it a hard line to fold on. I've given it something round to curl around. So I can squeeze from the center out and I can flatten up that bow quite a bit, but still not have it look smashed. It still has that curl to it. And then that little center piece, I'll just glue around. And I just uh, used the PVA glue that I had on my desk. You could use like a strong tape, like score tape or something like that if you want it to set up faster. I will use a uh, clothespin to hold it all together in a second. But at this point, I wanted to see how far I wanted my tails to hang down. I knew I didn't want them to come out to to the left and right, I wanted them to hang down. So I'll just add a dot of glue to both of those. And before I attach the tails, I'm giving them just a real gentle little curve. Everything that you do to add a little dimension to your die cut pieces, even though it tends to flatten out in the finished piece, there, there's still a little hint of it and you will have some of that dimension left over. So I always try to do that. For my little flower pot, I needed a, a scrap, something that I could build up from behind the pot with. So I just grabbed a scrap of cardstock and I colored it green real quick in case any of it shows. And then I decided these leaves on that piece, that, that longer floral piece, I wanted to sort of turn those into buds. So I just uh, touched up the coloring there real quick, added some of those same reds on top of the green. And then I'll start gluing this all together. This is all just PVA glued together. And I do kind of curl up those uh, flowers and the leaves a little bit before I put them in place. In fact, I've already done that off camera here. So I'll just quickly kind of figure out where they all go. Floral arranging is not necessarily my strong suit, but it's kind of fun in paper. <laughs> And that little trailing edge there, I kind of gave it a little bit of a curl down so that it would um, point in a, a slightly different direction. And then after I get all of those pieces glued in place, I was toying with that last flower. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put it on the pot or if I wanted to put it on the center of my bow. And I decided that I did want it on the bow. So I needed two more little leaves for it. Off camera, I just went ahead and cut those out real quick and colored them. And then I wanna fix my shading on that bow because the flower and the leaves will be on top of it. So if any of that shows, you kinda, you want it to look a, l a little deeper there. Although truthfully, you could probably skip that step. I think I cover almost all of it up. Then I will go ahead and glue the leaves and the flower in place. Notice that I'm using those tweezers both to hold the little tiny pieces and to kind of squeeze it together. I can just go through that top portion of the loop there and squeeze the, the leaf to the uh, bow itself without smashing the bow down. 
And also that little hole in the center of the flower, it's no big deal. I'm gonna cover it up with red gems at the end. So I'm not worried about whether or not that center part stayed in place. Now to glue together the four layers of the word love, I'm gonna use my glue sponge and I'm gonna apply glue to the pieces that go on the inside. This glue sponge is really cool. It saves a lot of time. It can be a little bit messy, so I like to use the head of my tweezers. I kind of just flip them over and uh, squish the, the die cut into the sponge that way so I'm not getting glue all over my fingers. And when you do that, it will occasionally put a little bit of glue on top of that layer as well. So you get it, it'll kind of go over the sides and come up on top. So it's totally fine for the inside and back pieces. But for the top layer, because I don't want any of that glue to accidentally come up on top, I am going to just go ahead and use my fine line bottle here. And it's fairly quick, but that glue sponge is... I really like it. It saves me a bunch of time when I remember to use it. I've got to remember to pull it out more often. <laughs> and it's right there on my desk. I don't know why I forget about it. New tool. Have to, have to incorporate it into my routine. Okay, so now... I'm gonna go ahead and grab my couple, and this is where I realized that they need a background. I was kind of hoping I could get away without coloring the background, but they, they don't look like they're inside without it. So I grabbed two C markers. This is a C3. It's slightly darker than the C1 that I'll come in with next. And I'm gonna take this C3 and just kind of outline around them. It's real quick. And once I've got them outlined, and, and I'm kind of wide about it, I'll grab that C1 and then I will just kind of fill it in, blend that out a little bit, and I will go all the way to the edges. Then I grabbed a C5 and a C7 to add the floor and just a little shadow right underneath them. And now they're ready to be glued onto the card front. And you can see with the Copic markers, it bleeds through, so that's why I wanted to color them on a separate piece of paper and then just glue them to my card front. If you're going to use a different color medium that doesn't bleed, go ahead and just put your image right on your card front. But I, I, had, I, I knew that I was planning to use my Copic markers for this. And I like the way that they're positioned. So now we can start putting the porch together. I've got some foam tape, and I'm going to put a layer across the bottom of that fold right under the stone, but I'm not all the way down to that fold line. I'm about an eighth of an inch up. And then I've also got foam tape for the pillars. And I'm also lining up those pillars about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom so that when I fold the card up, they don't interfere because they are sticking out a little bit. Then I can go ahead and place those down, smash it together. And now my front step is locked into place. And that's what I wanted for this card. I didn't want, I wanted that step to stay right up at the bottom of the door. Then I'll go ahead and add a little more foam tape and add the roof. And remember the roof line has color just at the bottom. So make sure you glue it with the color at the bottom. Then I'll glue the bow onto the front door. And notice that I'm only gluing it to the left side. If you put glue on both sides of the door, your door won't open. So I'm just uh, gluing that in place now. And it might be, uh, that might be something you want to do at the end after you glue this piece on. But for me, I thought it would be easier to be able to open those doors and, and really squeeze it together um, before I glued it in place. So now I just put glue on the whole back side there, except where the doors open. I wanted to make sure that I did not get any glue on the doors themselves. And then I can just put the rest of my pieces in place. I'm gonna try them out here, figure out where I want everything to go. And then I will just go ahead and pop them in place. Now that flower pot has a layer of foam tape and I've got the word love just glued flat to the bottom step there. If any glue seeps out, I just pick it up real quick with my little tool there. And then I can put that uh, sentiment strip in place with foam tape. And the bird is popped up with two layers of foam tape, a double layer. And then I glued some stars right at the, sto the stones at the top of the doorway. And remember I said those uh, flowers needed, or I wasn't worried about the, um, the holes in the flowers. I'm going to bring in these Max Red 
gems from Ink Road. They are awesome. I love this color. You can use it with pink, red, even orange because they have um, an AB finish to them. So you've got a lot of color in that red. And I was a little heavy handed with that glue. Okay, so for my doorknobs, I considered using some like Nuvo drops or something, but I just didn't trust myself to get them even. Even if I used my big ball stylus, I didn't think I'd get them right. And I wanted them to be kind of thick. I wanted them to feel like doorknobs. So I just grabbed a pair of mini brads from my stash, and then I'll just cut the uh, legs off with my little nippers that I use for snipping apart my dies. And then I'll glue them in place. And that jewel picker is helpful for tiny things like that. So then I've got one more uh, detail that I wanted to add, and this is always my last step. This is diamond glaze over his glasses, and that will kind of soften the white uh, Posca pen that I put there, which is actually fine. That's what I wanted. And when that dries, his glasses will be nice and shiny. So that finishes up my card. I hope that I have inspired you to give a front porch a try and definitely give these uh, impresslets a try too. This window box one is awesome. I've got links on my blog to everything that I used. I've also got a link on there to another scene that I created. I actually used this die to make uh, the door to a coffee shop and that kind of got me thinking about it. Also today is Linda Canasi's design team inspiration hop. So I've got links to that as well. I hope you'll hop along and you'll find more ways to use that die there. If you like today's card, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and click subscribe and ring that bell and you'll get a little notification. Here are links to a few more videos that you might be interested in. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching.